A small number of very passionate American ideological leaders visited Prussia in the first half of the 19th century, fell in love with the order, obedience and efficiency of its educational system, and campaigned relentlessly thereafter to bring the Prussian vision to these shores. To do that, children would have to be removed from their parents and from inappropriate cultural influences. John Taylor Gatto. American educationalists imported three major ideas from Prussia. The first was that the purpose of state schooling was not intellectual training but the conditioning of children to obedience, subordination and collective life. We must focus on creating citizens for the good of society. Public schools promote civic rather than individual pursuits. Each child belongs to the state. William H. Sewell, Professor of Education at the University of Virginia, 1981. We who are engaged in the sacred cause of education are entitled to look upon all parents as having given hostages to our cause. Horace Mann. On the night of June 9, 1834, a group of prominent men, chiefly engaged in commerce, gathered privately in a Boston drawing room to discuss a scheme of universal schooling. Secretary of this meeting was William Ellery Channing, Horace Mann's own minister, as well as an international figure and leading Unitarian of his day. The location of the meeting house is not entered in the minutes, nor are the names of the Assembly's participants, apart from Channing. Even though the literacy rate in Massachusetts was 98% and in neighbouring Connecticut 99.8%, the assembled businessmen agreed the present system of schooling allowed too much to depend upon chance. It encouraged more entrepreneurial exuberance than the social system could bear. The minutes of the meeting are Appleton Papers Collection, Massachusetts Historical Society. It was natural businessmen should devote themselves to something besides business, that they should seek to influence the enactment and administration of laws, national and international, and that they should try to control education. Max Otto, Science and the Moral Life, 1949 In 1852, the first compulsory schooling laws went into effect in Massachusetts. 80% of the public resisted this new law. In 1880, it took the militia to persuade the parents of Barnstable and Cape Cod to give up their children to the system. We want one class of persons to have a liberal education and we want another class of persons, a very much larger class of necessity in every society, to forego the privilege of a liberal education and fit themselves to perform specific difficult manual tasks. Woodrow Wilson at the address of the Federation of High School Teachers.
In our dream, people yield themselves with perfect docility to our moulding hands. The present educational conventions, intellectual and character education, fade from our minds, and unhampered by tradition we work our own good will upon the grateful and responsive folk. We shall not try to make these people or any of their children into philosophers or men of learning or men of science. We have not to raise up from among them authors, educators, poets or men of letters. We shall not search for embryo great artists, painters, musicians nor lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statesmen, of whom we have ample supply. The task we set before ourselves is a very simple as well as a very beautiful one. We will organise our children and teach them to do in a perfect way the things their fathers and mothers are doing in an imperfect way. First mission statement of Rockefeller's General Education Board, 1904. Healthy families and their foundations, a seamless non-competitive global system for commerce and trade, when stripped of flowery expressions of concern for minorities and less fortunate, etc., represented the initial stages of what this author now refers to as the deliberate dumbing down of America. Charlotte Isebert, Senior Policy Advisor, U.S. Department of Education during the Reagan administration. The conditioning of modern American society began with John Dewey, a psychologist, a Fabian socialist and the father of progressive education. Dewey used psychology developed by, by Wilhelm Wundt and believed that through a stimulus response approach like Pavlov, students could be conditioned for a new social order. I believe that education is a regulation of the process of coming to share in the social consciousness and that the adjustment of individual activity on the basis of this social consciousness is the only sure method of social reconstruction. John Dewey Plans are underway to replace family, community and church with propaganda, mass media and education. Of course he meant schooling. People are only little plastic lumps of dough. Another insider, H. H. Caddard, chairman for the psychology department at Princeton, called government schooling approvingly the perfect organisation of the hive with the anthill. Caddard wrote further, standardised testing would cause the lower classes to confront their biological inferiority, sort of like wearing a dunce cap. In time, that would discourage reproduction of the ants on the anthill. John Taylor Gatto, A Short Angry History of American Forced Schooling We were 13 at the meeting. Two things caused Dr. Ziegler, who was chairman of the Educational Committee on the Council of Foreign Relations, to ask me to attend. My talk on the teaching of functional physics in high school and the fact that I was a member of a group known as the Progressive Educators of America, which was nothing but a communist front. I thought the word progressive meant progress for better schools. Eleven of those attending the meeting were leaders in education, Drs. John Dewey, and Edward Thorndike from Columbia University were there and the others were of high rank. I checked later and found that all were paid members of the Communist Party of Russia. I was classified as a member of the party, but I did not know it at the time. The sole work of the group was to destroy our schools. We spent one hour and 45 minutes discussing the so-called modern map. At one point I objected because there was too much memory work and math is reasoning, not memory. Dr. Ziegler turned to me and said, Nelson, wake up. That is what we want. A math that the pupils cannot apply to life situations when they get out of school. 
That math was not introduced until much later, as those present thought it was too radical a change. A milder course by Dr. Breckner was substituted, but it was also worthless as far as understanding math was concerned. The radical change was introduced in 1952. It was the one we are using now. So if pupils come out of high school not knowing any math, don't blame them. The results are supposed to be worthless. O.A. Nelson, teacher and later vice president of Wilson High School, Minneapolis. The mind of the average American became trained, conditioned to accept the purpose that education exists solely for the purpose of getting a good paying job in the global workforce economy. The thesis I venture to submit to you is as follows, that during the past 40 or 50 years, those who are responsible for education have progressively removed from the curriculum of studies the Western culture which produces the most democratic state, that the schools and colleges have, therefore, been sending out into the world men who no longer understand the creative principle of the society in which they must live, that deprived of their cultural tradition, the newly educated Western men no longer possess in the form and substance of their own minds and spirits and ideas, the premises, rationale, the logic, the method, the values of the deposited wisdom which are the genius of the development of Western civilizations, that the prevailing education is destined, if it continues, to destroy Western civilization. I realise quite well that this thesis constitutes a sweeping indictment of modern education, but I believe the indictment is justified and there is a prima facie case for entering this indictment. Walter Lippmann, speaking before the Association for the Advancement of Science, December 29, 1940. The erroneous assumption is to the effort that the aim of public education is to fill the young of the species with knowledge and awaken their intelligence. Nothing could be further from the truth. The aim of public education is not to spread enlightenment at all. It is simply to reduce as many individuals as possible to the same safe level, to breed and train a standardised citizenry to put down dissent and originality. That is the aim in the United States, whatever the pretensions of politicians, pedagogues and any other such mountebanks, and that is the aim everywhere else. What we're into is total restructuring of society. Senior Director of Mid-Continent Regional Educational Laboratory to the governors of the 50 states. There is no record of a single governor objecting. Nearly half of all Americans read so poorly that they cannot find a single piece of information when reading a short publication. 20% of Americans cannot find the United States on a map. 20% of Americans are functionally illiterate and read below a 5th grade level. 50% of adults cannot read a book written at an 8th grade level.